<laughs> what up players, it's Wobot's Tay up in its mud. Look, it's Lewis in 40k. <laughs> hey you kids, get off my lawn and go to church. So welcome to this Warboss Chop Shop that started as a simple, let's add some wires to this guy and make a power pack and ended up being uh, this priest as the most faithful emperor fearing servant in 40k. And yeah, I'm going to say that this is Lewis in 40k. Oh Warboss, I decided to stop going out to the clubs and renounce my ways and go to church and I found the emperor. So. Let me tell you what you need to make them. You need the flagellant kit because holy moly there's so much stuff from the flagellant kit. And going off of part one which you can link to up here, uh, you're gonna need this guy or somebody with an eviscerator because I show you how to make a power pack for him. For those you're gonna need a chaos space marine backpack, you're going to need a, a regular space marine purity seals, the flagellant kit like I said, and these items from Gale Force 9. The first is round copper chain, this one here that kind of makes the power power cord that leads from the eviscerator to the power pack. And the second one is iron chain from Gale Force 9. The iron chain is kind of what makes the straps for the backpack for Lewis because he's not a space marine so he doesn't have a suit of power armor that he can plug into or that he can mount his backpack on. He has to actually carry it wherever he goes. So Lewis, uh, you ready for some paint? Yes! I want you to paint me like one of your French girls! Alright, here we go. What up, players? It's Wobos Tay up in this mud. Today we are doing an advanced conversion workshop, an advanced chop shop episode using my priest here. A little bit more light. My priest and uh, some other bits. So let's take a look at the kinds of tools we're going to be using. I'm using Gale Force 9's Iron Chain, Gale Force 9's Round uh, Snake Chain, Snake Chain, you see there, and I'm using the Priest Conversion from part uh, one, the earlier part of this video, and a Chaos Space Marine backpack, the one with a skull. So no arrows, no pointy eight-pointed stars, just a Chaos Space Marine backpack. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my plastic cement to glue the backpack onto our priest. Now our priest is just wearing ropes. He's not wearing an Astartes or Space Marine or Chaos Space Marine suit of power armor. So that's what the that's where the chains come in, because those are going to be his his backpack. So we're going to hold this for a little while, and let it start setting. Uh, rubber or plastic cement rather is super effective for this because both of the pieces are plastic, which means that it will kind of melt the two surfaces together, create a very strong bond and it's going to end up looking really good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is strap this guy in. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our iron chain here, 1.5 millimeters, and we are going to feed it down under his right arm and the eviscerator and through back. Okay, his uh, last pistol holster is getting, oops, a little bit in the way, so what I'm going to need to do is kind of work work the chain uh, just a tiny little bit. The good thing is, because we haven't really glued this part yet, there's a little bit of, we haven't glued the chain down yet, there's a little bit of, of room for us to kind of finagle it. Unfortunately, it looks like we glued the last pistol holster a little bit too close. I'm going to see if I can try to try to tease it in with a pin vise here. But we can we can work around it if this isn't going to work. Looks like it'll 
just barely not fit. So what I'm going to do is continue to work with it, but just kind of hide the fact that the last pistol in the holster from the first part of the conversion is going to be just a little bit in the way. So <clears throat> it's uh, going to be, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our plastic cement again because this is not really actual metal, I don't think. If it is, then, um, oops. But <laughs> I'm going to take the iron chain, quote unquote iron chain, and I'm going to just drape it down the back like this. And I'm going to glue it in there. I'm also going to glue it right where it meets the front of his body over here at the shoulder. Then I'm going to take this pair of tweezers. I'm going to bring the back part of the chain, feed it up to the top. And if you don't have enough room, you might want to, or if you don't have enough slack, you might want to get a little bit more. And just glue that sucker in right there. And make sure that's nice and solid. If you want, you can go a second time, even. But I like uh, one time. One time seems to be like it should be good enough for me. I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my. clippers here, and I'm going to clip it right near the top, where the two chains meet. Then I'm going to add a little bit more glue to seal down the end, and then I'm going to feed it so that the ends here looks like it's going underneath, underneath this little section so that it looks like it's wrapped around strong, more strongly and more firmly than it actually is. Then just taking my tweezers, going back around, playing with it to make sure that it's secured in the way I want it to be. And there you go, there's one side. Now we're gonna work on the other side. Again, we're taking our chain, giving it a little bit of slack here at the end, feeding it under the arm. this much slack, so I'm going to try to pull it back in a little bit. Gluing here from the top, here, the kind of where the shoulder is. I want it to be nice and tight, so we're going to pull it up like that. Bring it in, and back around. This time I'm hiding the slack for the front under his armpit. Right there. Okay, gluey, 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 gluey. Now, what does he have in this backpack? He doesn't have hiking supplies. He has got the power pack for his giant, super scary eviscerator. So, we're done with our iron chain, so we're gonna put that away. We're gonna get into our round copper wire looking chain. So this is going to connect between the power pack and 
his eviscerator. So there's two places you can have it extending from. Somewhere on the back on the right, down and into the main kind of housing of the eviscerator, or from the left and down either into the base of his eviscerator or up through the front. And I like going from the left and up to the front because then you can really look uh, really, you know, teched out. But at the same time, when you turn the figure to the right, the laser, laser pistol holster won't be hidden by the wire. So um, you don't have to be too clever with this. What I'm going to plan to do is just, I'm just going to stick it back here and just going to glue it in and then move it down and around the front to the, um, to the back of the eviscerator. So I'm going to measure approximately how much wire I need. You don't need too much because we're, we're, we're trying to get as little slack as we can. And then what I'm going to do for this, because it feels a little bit like um, not as plasticky as the iron chain does for some reason, I'm going to use super glue or zap a gap. So we're going to put the zap a gap in between there. Feed our chain in right into the back. Make sure that's not popping up the other side. This is why using a Chaos Space Marine or even a Space Marine backpack, if you've got it, is going to really, really work for you because it has a little gap in the back where uh, when put on a regular human figure, not on a Space Marine, but a regular human figure, it'll look really nice. And then we're going to glue the front part. I kind of like it right here, like near the base where there's a different level of, of detail so that with the, instead of doing a totally complete flat surface, having different areas, uh, raised areas will allow the glue, I feel, to, to adhere a little bit better because it's attached to different, you know, different sizes. Clip a little bit more. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so the thing with Zappa Gap, it's a little bit faster drying than plastic glue, but you still do, or plastic cement, but you still need to hold it for a little while. So um, again, this is for a conversion for your priest, Ministorum priest with Eviscerator, if you want him to join your Imperial Guard. Uh, some of the tactics that are really good is put him into a unit of conscripts, add a Commissar Lord in there for the Fearless and the Leadership 10, and yeah, your guys will be stuck in there for a long time. This guy also, because of his Eviscerator, is going to be putting out a lot of heavy... I think his special rule is he gets an extra dice when rolling for armor penetration, and that's fantastic if you're having your guys attack light vehicles, or even you could send him against a heavier vehicle, it can do really, really well for you. Oops. If you have tactics on using your Ministorm Priests, <laughs> oh, the back part fell out a little bit, um, please, please add them to the conversation. Oh, you know what I might do guys this this might be a little bit too fiddly for the camera I don't want my hand to be blocking the whole time So what I'm gonna do is finish holding this letting the glue dry off camera and then we will Yeah, we'll get together when um, I'll, I'll finish Showing this guy off when he's all built up All right, what I did was I built up and held the glue down and I actually glued in separate points and so I think when you're doing this on your own instead of just blazing through it like I did you might want to wait until the glue dries a little bit before going on to each new step but I glued up here first as um, or first I glued the anchor point back here into between the backpack and the body then I glued down here by the left leg where the wire meets the leg down here where the right leg meets the wire 
then up here by the wrist he's got this little chain piece so I glued that in and then finally the uh, piece that anchors it to the eviscerator. All right, so as we're going on, I decided to do a kind of like advanced war boss chop shop part to this video because I found all these other great bits that I thought would fit the Ministorm priest motif really well. And they're all from, guess where? The fana uh, Flagellants box set, Flagellant. So in order to make it work, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a set of hobby clippers. We're gonna clip off this center vent from the backpack. You wanna make sure you have these bits. Now this is really taking your conversion to the uh, to the next level in kit bashing. Specifically kit bashing. Not really green stuffing converting, but kit bashing. And I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I'm working. So now we're taking our plastic cement, gluing it down the back and putting in this piece here. So when I'm converting and kit bashing, what I like to do is think about what the final, what the final product is gonna be. And that kind of determines how involved I wanna be with my conversion. So when you first saw me make this Ministorum Priest, the conversion was very simply taking a flagellant model, cutting off the flails for his double hand weapon, replacing it with a Chaos Space Marine chainsword, and then adding a holstered last pistol. For this part, I started by going in crazy with the um, iron chain, the cable chain, and the Chaos Space Marine backpack, and now we're adding even more craziness from the Flagellant's pack. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking artwork, or something that I've seen, specifically the Dark Heresy kind of John Blanche artwork, and um, stuff like that, and then I'm kind of giving it my own spin. The, the goal is you want to keep it in the realm of whatever you are you are doing. So you want to keep it looking 40k. How awesome is that? And that's just step one. I found this book which is really cool and it's going to go right onto the back right here. I'm gonna connect it as if it's hanging from a chain. Um, the first thing though is we wanna make sure this is glued down nice and tight. So we'll actually let this, let this dry a little longer before we do any other craziness. But yeah, the 40K Gothic look is really um, rec recognizable. It's easy, to, it's easy to go overboard. So you don't, you don't wanna to go too overboard. I might be, but I might not. I don't know, who knows. Um, yeah, so let's let's continue going. So I found this other piece of parchment off the Flagellant's kit, and we could use it to write scripture or something awesome on it, and that is gonna go right here. So another thing that I like to do is dry fit first. I like to, to put the pieces where, where they're eventually gonna go and just kinda line the model up so that I can see if it's going to fit or not. So if, the, if this part of the backpack was too wide, or conversely too, th too thin, it wouldn't work. But as it, as it is, the uh, parchment where the little nails, where the little nails are, kind of line up perfectly with this round exhaust port. So if I wasn't using a Chaos Space, like if I was using a regular Space Marine backpack, it might not look as good because the Chaos Space Marine backpack flares out, which is why this is perfect for this parchment. Okay, now looking at where we want our book to go, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer. Let's talk about purity seals. Where do the purity seals go? The purity seals would go anywhere on our priest here that would be obvious to somebody looking at it. So we'll put one down here hanging from his hip because I kind of want to cover 
this hole in his robes. The, the poor beggar look doesn't work so well for the 40k Ministorm priests, I find, as it does for Empire Flagellants in Warhammer Fantasy. But that's just a personal, personal thing. You could have your your priest be a, you know, a missionary or a pilgrim walking around. But I like my guys to have a little bit more, more of a fanatic look to them. We're going to put the second one hanging from his left arm. Oop. So as you can see, we're, we're, I'm trying to go for a very crazy decorated kind of, kind of look. So there's a second one and I put glue on the third piece right up here. So the third piece is gonna be hanging from the backpack. So I'm kind of going for a wherever you turn or look at this guy, you see something pretty cool kind of effect. Now we're gonna put the book, which I figure to be like the um, a scripture or something something like that of this priest that he's that he's preaching we're gonna put it right up here so I added some glue to the back banner to this one pole I added some glue to the back of the backpack there and I connected it at the bottom you can see at the bottom of the book there's a little chain hanging and the back banner or the yeah the back banner connecting to the pole so there you go my philosophy make your models look good make them you don't want to do too much though so i think if there is any more than this it would be too much i think this is even a lot but i mean with the flagellants you could add bells you could add a whole bunch of other things like more you could add more purity seals from the space marines range there's so much more you could do but i think this is as crazy as I want to get it this time. Or maybe I'll put a little skull on the right side, hanging. Yeah, you know what, why not? Let's do it. I'm motivated, I'm inspired. So there's a little skull on a chain here that I'm gonna clip off. And... I think if you're always, if, if you're ever inspired, you should always go with it. And then if you make a mistake, then at least you can say you followed your inspiration. Sometimes I feel like my muse, this the thing, the, my muse of creativity is just like... Some... Somebody in a toga or something drinking a beer, like a like a Greek lady in a toga drinking a beer and saying, yeah, bro, that's so cool. Dude, you're so awesome. We're boss today, you're so cool. And I can live with that. So there is our crazy old man priest. Maybe I'll do a second skull. I am so motivated right now. I'll do a second skull. And <laughs> what am I talking about? And, um, yeah, just do, do what inspires you, do what motivates you. I'm so glad that I have this flagellant kit because I think Games Workshop needs to have more kits like this. More kits that is just packed to the gills with stuff. You know, when they started releasing the Skaven as, you know, being put completely together and you don't really have much creative f freedom to do anything with them, it's kind of sad. Because then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I wanted to add all these little doodads. Even with the Empire uh, State Troopers kits, remember when they came out with the new ones where the, they're all kind of leaning forward? All of the torsos have stuff on them already. There's not much that, that you could add, really. You could choose what heads they have and what weapons they're wearing. But other than that, you have to kind of go with what they what they give you. So... That's why I like 
kits like the Flagellant kit. You can go totally buck wild. And um, yeah, so there we go. This is going to be an interesting introduction I have to make for this video because there's so much bits I ended up using. But thanks for watching, everybody. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed it, this uh, advanced chop shop video. I had a lot of fun filming it. hope you had a lot of fun watching it. We'll see you in the next one. Go to church!